Okay, welcome back to the test bench. So next day, we yesterday, just to recap, we laid our track bed, we laid track over the top, we gave the sleepers a, a base coat, we painted the sides of the rails, we cleaned the top of the rails up. So our next basic step in laying the actual track is to ballast. Now, I haven't gone in against um, wiring up or anything else, we'll do that in another video. So I'm going to show you my method of ballasting. There's various different tools around, there's various different ways of doing it. Um, mine's fairly easy, well I think it's fairly easy. Um, gives a reasonable result and we're going to look at what this base coat looks like once we've got some, um, some ballast along it. Right, so what I'm going to need, first thing you're going to need is some ballast. I use Woodland Scenics ballast. Now this says medium ballast in there, you might be able to tell on the side, maybe not. Um, I've actually mixed in some fine there as well, so I've got two different grades of ballast in my ballast there. I use the medium grey, it comes in all different colours. You'll need some PVA wood glue. You'll need something for tipping the ballast onto the track with, some people use a teaspoon, some people use other stuff. You can get little adapters that go on there to do it. You'll also need a mix of something to actually take the surface off the ballast so it'll absorb water in the glue. If not, it'll just sit on top. So you've got to decrease the surface tension. What I use is a 50-50 mix of methylated spirits. Methylated spirits. I mix it up in a spray bottle. This one happens to be a window cleaner bottle. But I mix that up in an everyday spray bottle and I'll use that to wet the ballast. That helps the glue to absorb. The glue flows easier, you'll end up with a much nicer finish. Now if you remember yesterday we went out and had a look at the railway line and we showed that there was ballast action on top of the, the sleepers. So I'm not going to be overly fussed on if we get every single piece of ballast under every single sleeper. But that's going to be our aim. Okay, so that's the introduction. Um, we're going to make a start and we'll go from there. So the first thing I do is dispense out into a small container a mixture of the ballast. Just a small amount. Ballasting is better done small sections at a time. So we're going to zoom in on this area here and we're going to show you, show you the prep. So I'm just going to with my container, just tap some in along the edge. Some people say you should do the sides first and then the middle. I don't think it really makes any difference. Once I've got the ballast in, I just move it along with the finger. Just trying to get it nice and even in there. If you wanted your sleepers to show up more, then you will go for a different colour ballast or paint your sleepers a different colour. It really is personal preference. But I'm actually liking the look of that already. Okay, to help settle the ballast, just a light tap with a teaspoon. And what you might notice is that ballast jumping around the place. You can see here where it's starting to come out underneath. That's what we want. So you're not actively hitting it, just letting that teaspoon fall. Give it another light little brush along. What you don't want is any ballast sticking to the inside of the rail, because if then your, the flange of your wheel will jump and you're, you're running the risk of uh, derailing. Using the round, the round of the teaspoon, then you're not going to get an edge or anything like that. You're not going to divot your rail. You'll find that they will magically move off and settle under. So 
somewhere like here, where you can see there's a little bit of a hole maybe, then all you need to do is just gently tuck in a few more. Give it a little tap in. I'm quite happy with that. I'm not really going to get much more. It's below the levels of the sleepers, which is where I want. We've got a few little specks on top. I'm not going to buggerise around and um, spend ages trying to flick everyone off because they do sit on the sleepers. Right, so then with 50 50 mix of methyl and water from a height, give that a good soak. Give that a couple of minutes just to settle in. While that's settling in, what you want to do is make up your glue mix. Now, I have some pre-made glue mix here. Now, to apply this, you're going to need either an eyedropper or a syringe or something. There's various different ways. What you don't want to do is really, really flood your balance because all that you'll do is you'll wash it off, off to the side here. So in here, PVA glue. I make mine to 50% PVA glue. 50% is my mix out of my spray bottle. So all up, one part water, one part methylated spirits, two parts glue. And I find that that actually works really well. The only problem is, this has been sitting for a while and glue the top on. So I'll be back in a sec once I get the top. <laughs> well, shows you that the methyl in the water doesn't actually uh, decrease the strength of the glue because I ended up having to get a pipe wrench onto the, onto the lid to open it up. Okay, so that's my uh, mix in there. White, sloshy, fairly dilute PVA glue. You can buy, I have seen in the bottle shops, specific ballasting glue. And I'm pretty sure that it's just PVA glue with a fancy name. All right, now I use a syringe. If I'm doing delicate areas, I'd use a syringe. If I'm doing a big area, then what I'll do is take the barrel out and just use my finger as a control. So what I go is, is with the syringe, just to put one or two drops onto each ballast area. If you notice I've taken the plunger out of this, this is an old syringe and after a while they get a bit sticky. And then you run the risk of flooding it. You can see how the glue is soaking in. That's the effect of that methylene or methyl added spirits. Biggest, most important thing with ballasting is that once you've got the glue in, leave it alone. If you come back and play with it before it's dried, you're in trouble. I'm do some off screen. Uh, let's go back down this area. If you, I'll show you what to do if you get a flood. So I'm going to flood this area here. Something which I wouldn't normally do. The other thing you can do is give it a spray, dilute it a little bit more, and it will just soak through that a little bit further. Okay, that area that I've flooded, what you can do to rescue it, so a little bit of tissue paper, and it will soak up your excess. If you've got big lumps, a ballast like this bit here, just with a brush, 
and either pop them back into where you want them or you can take them off. So this is a, only a rescue mission. The other little particle on your sleepers, I'm not going to worry too much about. You can get them off if you want. Okay, so I'm going to balance this section in here now. I'm just going to run a little bit of ballast in. One important tip for ballasting is to make sure your ballast itself is dry. If there's any moisture in there, it will clump. And then it will stick to everything, it will be hard to spread. And you'll be forever regretting ballasting. I don't know if there's anybody that enjoys ballasting. Or well, maybe that's just me. So just spreading it with fingers, just slightly. No need to go overboard here. Tap it with your spoon. If you whack it, this is what will happen. Your ballast will jump out and then you're back to square one. Just go and top that up there. So when the ballast is on the sleepers, it's generally in the middle. So just a few little light taps on, under its own weight. Just to help that ballast. So let me give it a spray with the water mix. 50% metho, 50% water. Give that a little minute. If you really dislodged any lumps of ballast that you don't want on your sleepers, if you want to be a perfectionist rather than a realist, <laughs> my wife will call me an optimist or a pessimist. What go wrong will go wrong, Murphy's Law. Then you can just move them around, get them off before you do the next spot. Now, Our next step is to apply the glue. Now I use the syringe, wipe the tip, and all that I do is just very carefully drop some in, in between the sleepers. You'll find that that will soak in If it goes on top of the sleepers, it dries clear, so it's not a big issue. So just carefully, just going and dropping some in. Some people use an eyedropper for this section, or for this. Some people flood it, then just let it all drain away. Some people do the edges and then the centres. I don't think it really matters. You'll find what works for you, and then you'll be, um, you'll be on your way. So you can see that this is soaking in. Just top it up as you go, just so you're happy. You don't really want to flood it. All that that will do is wash your ballast away and take it a lot longer to dry. If you've got some, like this a little bit here on a sleeper and you want to get it off, edge of a tissue, up to a nice, twist him up so he's up to a nice little point, and then just touch them to the sleepers and you'll find that that will wick up 
any excess glue that you want. If you don't do this, it's not an issue because it will dry clear. In fact, I'll leave those ones just so you can see that. Now, the best piece of advice, oh, I was going to leave that one, wasn't I? That you can have with ballasting is leave it alone. Let it dry and then just go away. Go and watch a movie, do something, have a sleep, let it dry for a good 24 hours and then come back and have a look at it. Okay? Sweet. Ballasting. I'm going to show you how we do the edges, but I'll do that on a different part of the test bench. So I'll just set that up and then we'll be back. Okay, here I'm going to show you how we do the edges of the ballasting. I'm also going to put some ballast in here and I'm not going to use the water with the metho, just so you can see what it does. So in order to do the edges, fairly simple to, I actually do the very edge first, so we're going to do this bit here. I run a bit of glue along there. Smooth that out. Anywhere you don't want ballast, take it off. Like I said, some people do this before, some people do it after. Then all that I do is chuckle that along. Push it up onto the edge there so it sticks into your onto your track bed. Seems like an overkill, but you can vacuum the excess up afterwards. Press that in and let that glue go off. If you looked at our railway yesterday on the balancing, you may have seen a little ridge on the side there like that. That is just naturally what the balance seemed to have done. So this little ridge that I've got here, I'm not a problem. Now, in the middle here, I'm going to put a little bit of ballast. And this time I'm, I'm just going to put the glue straight on it. So I'm not going to use that metho. I'll give him a little tap. So this is ballast without that metho. Now, allow for the fact that there is some metho in the glue. And if I put that on there, can you see how the ballast is sticking to the top of the glue and the glue is not really soaking in anywhere near as well? He says as that bit soaks in. See the ballast sticks you've got that surface tension which is causing problems it will soak in over time wow did you see that and have a look at the ballast so this is your problem when you've got no spray on there you can really see what that ballast is doing there now luckily this is my test bench so I'm quite happy to do this if you've gone oh crap I forgot to spray it Spray it there. Get your brush. Move your ballast back where you want it to be. This is how you rescue it. I learned this through trial and error. Because I did go and put the glue on once and go, oh no, I forgot to use my metho.
then you can go back whoops and put your rest of glue this is so saturated there So lesson number one, make sure you use your method first. These are all the things that can and probably will go wrong in your ballasting. And it really has the potential to undo all that other work that you've done. So now I'm just popping up that excess, that big spill. This is rescue one, ballast rescue 101. Back to your paintbrush. Smooth it all back down. So that will probably be passable. I'll leave that and we'll see what it's like afterwards.